Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter Card Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Kazushi. Kazushi is for two to four players, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play the game, and it is a game in which you're basically trying to have an area control. It is a programmable game in which you're going to be placing down tiles, and of course, either placing them down um, face in facing the main side here, which is going to basically uh, increase the board area, or uh, when it increases the board area, it's going to have these little guys here that are going to come off of the main tile. And you're going to be trying to remove those those from your opponents and place more of your own. Once the board gets all filled up, whoever has the most spaces and control is going to win. And you also have the option of moving tiles by flipping them and trying to control more area. That doesn't make a lot of sense. That's okay. I'm going to show you down below exactly how it's played along with right now the components of the game. So here is Kazushi and everything that's going to be included in the game. There's four different decks of cards here and they basically have a front and a back that are the same or similar. This is the smaller portion and this is the larger portion. You're also going to get two tiles that have a front and a back. These are basically the city tiles that will start the game off and included you're going to have player references which is going to show you everything you need to know in order to play the game finally a little box that is needed to put the cards all in all together when you're playing a two-player game you'll have a six by six grid and when you play a four-player game you'll have an eight by eight you can play up to two three or four players once you go ahead and decide how many players you're going to play with you're going to move the colors aside and then you're going to choose the first player to take this piece here and either and put it on their side so if, if we're going to have a uh, pink go first, we'll have this, and if we're going to have yellow go first here, blue, and of course green. So we'll have green go ahead and start first, and that is basically all you need to do to start the game off. Everybody else is going to take these colors into their hand, and these will be what they use to place down onto the board. Come up and we'll talk about how a turn works. Once a player goes ahead and places their color face down to begin the game, which is basically their city tile, this piece is never going to be moved and it will never be changed. Then the next player in clockwise order is going to go ahead and take their deck of cards and place one of these guys, the larger circle, onto the board. They can place it up, down, left, or right of that specific uh, city tile. And after they do that, they're going to surround the, the tile they placed with these smaller circles. This is going to basically give them more area in the game. Like I said, with a larger player game, you're gonna have an eight by eight. So once you get to that point, that is when the grid stops. And it can go left, right, up, or down in those eight different areas. And the grid's gonna be dependent on where people place. After all of them have been placed down onto the board, the next player is going to get to to go and when they place down it's going to be dependent on uh, where they place and how they place as to whether or not they're going to be removing their enemies tiles or placing down their own tiles removing enemy tiles is going to be based on whether or not the enemies have larger circles protecting those tiles or if they don't the person who has the majority of those is actually going to be the one that controls that specific area and whether or not they can actually go ahead and place those things down and when the board gets filled up after everybody's been done playing all these things here the person who has the least amount of tiles in their hand or the person who has the most area which is pretty much the same thing on the board is going to be the winner all right let me go ahead and show you the game and how it is played very 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 simple okay so the game is pretty much set up as you can see all four players have their decks of cards they'll have them in their hands and you're going to choose one of these city tiles like i said before and start to remove the other one from the game you won't need that after you've done that in clockwise order the players are going to take their hand of cards and take the larger circle and place it down after they do that they're going to fill in the sides of uh their space with these little guys here once that that's done, the next player is going to get to go. On your turn, you have one of two actions. You can either choose to place one of these guys face like face up like this, or if they already have something like this on the board, they can actually go ahead and just choose to flip one and add them. But for now, we're going to just go ahead and show you this because he doesn't have the other option currently. When a card gets placed back into a person's, uh, removed, it gets placed back into a person's hand. And the reason why blue was able to remove this guy is because it shared a side with just one yellow, and this was just one blue. If it's tied, he gets to remove remove it, or if he has more, he gets to remove it. If this guy actually had this here, he would not be able to take uh, this because there'd be two sides, but that wasn't the case, so this is gonna go back. The next player is then going to get to go. You could use these reference cards if you need to, but it's not super needed because of how simple the game is. Then uh, the pink player, he can place anywhere he wants on the board, provided the eight by eight grid stays intact. You can't place farther than an eight by eight. So this player can go ahead and place this right here. He's gonna go ahead and fill these spaces in, and because it's a one and a one, one, this yellow is going to go back. Poor yellow has been removed down to one. Then the green player is going to get to go. Green could choose if he wants to place that just like that, and bam, and bam. Continuing the game just like that. And you're always going to make sure you count the grid, which is one, two, three, four, and five, so you can still go out three more. And this is four 
here so it can still go out four more in any direction. Yellow can go ahead and place this right here. Since it's a one and a one, these would get removed and these are going to come down. Make sure you keep count so you make sure that you still have the grid uh, in, basically have the grid in eight by eight, one, two, three, four, five, no big deal. Then blue is going to get to go. He could choose instead to go ahead and flip one of these guys, which he's gonna go ahead and do this time. And when he does that, these guys are going to come down. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's still good, no big deal there. Uh, this player, maybe he'll go ahead and choose to do this, which is going to give him these guys here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So he's still good. And the game is going to continue like that. As you play, you're going to keep putting down these things here. So this would actually go here because there's a one and a one there. And this and this. And uh, this is actually going to get removed. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, basically, once the grid has been completed is when the game is going to be over. And the person who has the most controlled area on the board is going to be the winner. Now, you could choose not to actually fill in that last spot and actually just start flipping over pieces to try and remove your opponent's pieces. Like, for instance, if I went ahead and flipped this guy over here, blues would actually go ahead. Oops. Uh, sorry. If, yeah, if I went ahead and... Uh, oh, I can't flip that. It's a city tile. But if I went and flipped over this guy here, I could go ahead and remove this thing here uh, during any point in time of the game, which is going to slow down pink. And it makes more of a difference when you're playing a, two, a three or four player game less than a two player game. But that's the basic idea of the game. I think you pretty much get it once the grid is fully completed. You start counting up all the different colors. So if we somehow manage to stop the game here, which you wouldn't, you have to fill in the whole grid. It would be four yellow. It would be six green, five uh, blue, and uh, six uh, pink. In which case, whoever had the most is going to be the winner. All right, you get the idea. Let's come up and talk about it. Okay, just before we go ahead and start talking about Kazushi and what I think about it, the last little caveat is if a player manages to empty their hand of cards before the game has been filled in, that player also wins. It doesn't happen too often, but it can. And when that does occur, that player is going to instantly win the game. Okay, so what do I think about this game? Well, I actually went to Arizona Game Fair last year, or earlier this year, I should say, and I got to play the original Kazushi, and that was a lot of fun. I like area control games, I like simple mechanics, and I like thinking, and this one has that. It reminds me of the games like Othello and stuff, where you're trying to control areas on the board. It has kind of a systematic approach in which you know the best moves are possible uh, if you're smart enough to, to grasp that. I'm definitely not, so as I was playing the game, I started learning and learning. The more you play this kind of game, the better you're going to get at it, and with more players comes more strategy and more thinking as to where you want to place. In a two-player game, it's always going to come down to really, really, really close odds. Usually it's just one or two difference as to who is actually going to be the winner of the game. With a three or a four-player game, that actually makes a difference as well. The game's simple. It's small, and I definitely, definitely enjoy this game. The artwork is fairly simplistic in nature. It's going to have basically the different colored flowers or circles, whatever you want to call them, and you're going to have the small side and the large side. It's basically going to be about area control. In the original game, I think it had flags. This is definitely better. It has more of an appealing look to it, and I enjoy the board's overall color and features and whatnot when the game is finally done. Uh, if you don't like smaller games, this is one you're probably going to want to pass on. If you don't like games that involve area control or thinky mechanics in which you're trying to gather the most area as possible, but uh, you might not gonna enjoy this, but if you do like that thinking process, if you do enjoy the stylistic aspect of the game, the mechanical aspect of the game, this is definitely one to consider. I really, really enjoy this game. I've played it multiple times over and over again, and it got better with more players. I enjoyed the more different, unique aspects that can take on the game. And the fact that you actually think that the game's pretty much over, and it's not. You can start flipping over your tiles to try and take over those last little bits of area or removing those last little bits of area from your opponents, which can change the game drastically, which is really, really cool. Overall, this game is really, really fun. If you like a small filler game, definitely check out Kazushi. I give it my seal of approval for small miniature games. Enjoyable. Nice. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, and we do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Kazushi, which is currently on Kickstarter. It's a really small, simple game, but it has a lot of fun in it. I think those players who like micro games or simple filler games are going to enjoy this game as well, especially for those thinky people, even if you're not. I still enjoy it, and I'm not that super thinky overall. But also go check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're currently giving away the game um, Fires Vitalon, a really, really fun game similar to um, Forbidden Island. Also go and check out everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, as well as checking out Kess. They got some great stuff as well. Link in the description below. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I appreciate it, and I look forward to controlling the most area next time.